Game Brawlers, my name is Nick, and today we are taking a look at a felt pouch full of dice. No, actually there's a real game here, it's called Line Dice, designed by Walter Shero and published by his company Worldwide Chaos Inc. Now in the interest of full disclosure, Mr. Shero actually sent me this game with the purpose of reviewing it, but that is not going to actually influence what I think about the game at all. I've played it several times, and I'm going to give you my honest opinion, just like I always do. But first, let me tell you a little bit about the game. So it is a dice game. In fact, that's pretty much all there is to the game. It's got like these cool custom dice, which I'll show you close up in a minute. And it's basically an abstract game. Uh, you're going to, each player is going to get a certain amount of these dice, and the dice actually have little roads and arrows on them. And you're going to take turns putting those dice down on the table and making a continuous road. And you win by either being the first person that goes out or by forcing your opponents to not have any legal moves to make or to force an opponent to make uh, an infinite loop back to the start of the game. So I don't typically like abstract games, but I am a sucker for custom dice games. I have couriers on my shelf. I've got several games that have really cool dice, castle dice, which I just played the other day. So who knows? And maybe this one's going to surprise me. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you a little bit about how the game plays. It's very simple, so I can probably show you everything about the game this time. And then we're going to come back and I'll tell you what I think. So Line Dice is a very simple game. It comes with 36 custom six-sided dice. And un unlike normal six-sided dice with numbers, these have six different custom faces. So you have your basic die here, which are just roads, which just have a straight line. Then you have these crosses, which uh, they're not four-way stops. A better way to think about them would be highway overpasses. And then you have four different dice, each representing the corners of uh, different roadways. So you see there's a different corner in each of those, and they have an arrow pointing in a different direction. So this game is all about making roads. And each player is going to get a certain amount of dice. So let's assume it's a four player game. So you'll have nine different dice. And you're, each player gets their certain amount of dice and they're going to roll them at the beginning. And whatever you roll, you're stuck with. That's it, that's all you get for the rest of the game. And once you've rolled publicly, everyone can sort of hide their dice you know, behind their arm or dungeon master screen or whatever you have handy really. And then you're gonna randomly determine who goes first. And then you're just going to play dice back and forth depending on the number of players. So your first move can be any die that you want. You can just choose to play across. You can do whatever you want. But there's a couple of different limiting factors. So first of all, whenever someone plays the first die with an arrow, whichever direction they want to go, from then on, however it's oriented, every die that has an arrow must be pointing in that same direction. So for instance, if I put the die out on the table and it's pointing like this to my left, then every arrow from any player that gets played from then on must also be pointing in that same direction, which is going to limit how you can place your dice. Remember, you cannot roll your roll dice, so whatever you have, you're stuck with. Now there's one further rule, and that's that the second die that is played, no matter what it is, is going to determine the path and which way the road is going to go. So if that was the first die that I played, with the arrow in the corner, and then the next player decides to play this cross, from now on, all of the roads that are played must be going in this direction to my left. They cannot, that cannot change for the rest of the game. You cannot double back, and you cannot, let's say, for instance, play uh, another die here, even if it would normally be a legal move, because that's making the road go in the opposite direction, and you cannot do that. Now, that's an interesting thing, because if you put another player into a position where they don't have a legal move, which is to say that either they can only play a die that would double back on the road, or they can't, the only die that they have, they, they can't get the arrow orientation right, and so on and so forth, they are knocked out of the game. If you do not have a legal move, you are out. There's another way that you can knock people out of the game too, and that's by forcing them to do an infinite loop. So this is sort of a dramatic example, but let's say that that's the second die that was played, and then the next player plays this, and then the other, the next player in line only has this move to make. Well, you see that following the rules, all the arrows were going in the same direction, but it forced, this is a very generic example, but 
it forced the game, uh, the person to play back to the start of the game. And that player, whoever placed that last piece, is knocked out, not the player before who set them up. So that's another way to knock people out. And if, you know, if, if you're the last player standing, essentially, you're going to win. But you also win if you just run out of dice. So having the first player advantage is pretty huge because if you can just keep going without being locked out of playing a move or looping back to the beginning, you're going to win no matter what because you'll be the first one to run out of dice. Now, uh, a couple other little brief explanations on how things work. With the cross here, like I said, you have to picture this as an overpass. So when you put it out and you play a die against it, you're not the road has to go in the same direction so you can't just if this was this cross was just played the next person just can't start making a road up here it's got to go in this direction because this is where the road is going also with that cross you can't just play another die that would not be connected so this would be illegal because you see that there's just this other underpass of the cross just hanging there not touching anything so that's an illegal move but that's basically the game of line dice you're going to keep playing until you're either the first one out or you have knocked out every other player in the game there is one interesting variant rule which we did not try which they call in the book mike's bluff which is to say that if you do not have a legal move you could just go ahead and throw a die out there on the table and if the next player in line is not paying attention and no one else is and calls you out on it and that next player in line actually goes ahead and let's let's just give an example so let's say that I'm uh, that was the die that was played and someone goes ahead and plays this see the arrows in a different direction if that next player does not call you out on it and they go ahead and place a die like whatever like the cross let's say then you get away with it essentially you've just got you've made an illegal move but it's too late the other die next person's die is down and play continues and maybe when it comes back around to you again you will have a legal move or maybe it's the very end and you're able to go out before anyone else can catch you so that's an interesting variant that you might want to try but basically that's line dice in a nutshell so like i said at the beginning of this review line dice is an abstract game and it's very simple i mean what i showed you in the overview is basically it uh it but that is not a knock against the game. I mean, this is not a game where people are going to say, I've been playing line dice for 20 years and I have not figured out every variation and uh, methodology and strategy to defeating my very wise opponents and stroking their beard. That's not what this game is for. This game is a, designed to be a light, sort of brain burny, light brain burny uh, filler that you know that really makes use and emphasizes those custom dice which are cool i love custom dice and those are very cool i've never seen anything like them before and so it succeeds well in that regard and i like this game it is fun for what it is you know this is something that's very portable it's very light i mean you can just and i think it's very accessible you can play this with anyone i mean if you have those people in your family who just cannot and will not wrap their head around <laughs> Descent or Twilight Imperium. Or they're just not going to play a game that's you know heavily thematic with monsters or aliens. This you know if they're used to playing Bridge or Spades, this is the game for them. And I'm not saying that in a negative way. I think that's a great thing because I think it's a nice little bridge between uh, you know having a new type of modern game to introduce to your family and to play with them. And you know everyone's got that friend who never comes to your board game nights because they're not, they don't want to play something long and involves. Well, this is a great game for them. Now, I will say that the one thing that I had an issue with with this game was the number of players. I've played it with three different groups of players. I've played it two player, I've played it three player, and I've played it four player. A two player game is, I'm sorry, I played it two, three, and five player game. A two player game was, it was interesting, but it honestly was not that fun. Because essentially I was playing with my friend Wes and at a point Wes knew that at a very early point, probably the middle of our game, which you know was only like you know five to seven minutes, uh, he knew he was going to win. The reason for that was because he knew uh, there was something I could do to trip him up with my arrow dice and he had enough roads and crosses that all he had to do, it was just a waiting game. He went first. So he knew that it was just a waiting game. If he went out, he won. There's nothing I could do to trip him up and we both knew that's what was going to happen. Now we added a third player the next time we played and that was dramatically different and much more fun because it just adds a little bit of extra randomness. Now you're trying to plan against two people and you have no idea what's going to happen. Uh, we actually managed to lock someone out of the game because they couldn't make a legal move which was, uh, you know, it was very interesting. And then, you know, it, it still came down to basically a waiting game between the remaining two players but 
there were a couple of times when I won that game, there were a couple of times where I was nervous because if my opponent just played one particular die, I didn't know that I had to come back for that. So much more interesting with three people. And with five people, also interesting, but a little too chaotic. So I, you know, it sounds like I'm nitpicking there, but I really think that the sweet spot of this game is going to be three to four players. You know, I haven't played with four, but I don't think it would be that much dramatically different than a three-player game. In fact, four players might be the optimal way to play this. But, but regardless of all of that, this is a very interesting game. It's definitely got me interested in other types of abstract games that use dice. If there are any, I'm going to have to go search those out. And it definitely has me interested for more of what uh, Walter Shero and his company have to offer in the future. If you love custom dice, if you love simple filler games that uh, are, you know, still strategic, still thinky, uh, then this is going to be the game for you. Uh, I don't think it's available in retail, but you can go to linedice.com. I'm going to have a link underneath the video, which you can go to and purchase it directly from the company. Uh, and so if it's something that you think is interesting to you, then you should definitely check it out. I know that I liked it. That's the only person I can speak for right now. So my name is Nick. This has been Board Game Brawl, and I'm reminding you to get out there and game every day and in every way. Take care.